What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about the composite design pattern. So let us get right into it. All right, so another one of those design patterns. Now the composite design pattern is actually quite simple to understand and it's quite intuitive. It's not too abstract or too fancy. Uh, the idea is very simple and very, uh, something that you can grasp with common sense, I would say. And it's basically that we have multiple classes that inherit from the same interface or parent class and one of those can consist of many of the others. So for example, if we're talking about uh, regions, we can say one region can consist of many subregions, and those subregions can consist of other subregions. And what we're going to do in this video here is we're going to use departments as an example. So we're going to have one parent department, one big department, which is uh, composed of an accounting department, developer department, and so on. And if you want, of course, you can also say that the uh, that the developer department is composed of uh, specific development departments and so on. So this is the basic idea. And why do we do that? First of all, of course, uh, it creates a hierarchy and a tree-like structure, but also it increases the flexibility and it makes the structure uh, easier to use. So you might want to use that in some of your projects. Uh, the basic idea is... Uh, or actually, let's just start with the imports here. So from ABC import ABC meta and abstract method here. And then we're going to, let's just clear the search here. Uh, then we're going to have a department interface. So we're going to say class I department, which is going to have the meta class ABC meta. And here we're going to define an abstract constructor. So we're going to say abstract method, abstract, come on, method is going to be the initializer with self and the number of employees. So this is what we're going to do here. We're going to say a department can have a certain number of employees. And of course, if you have a parent department, which consists of uh, sub departments, those departments have their employees, and then we have a total number of employees there. Uh, this is the basic idea here that we're going to try to model. And this is something that we're going to implement, implement in child class like that. And then we're going to say also an abstract. Actually, I think for this, we need an abstract static method. So let's import that as well. Abstract static method here. Abstract static method. And here we're going to have print department, print department. And we're also going to implement this in a child class. All right, so that's the basic interface. And now we can say, okay, we have an accounting department. So let's say class accounting, we're not going to call accounting department, but just accounting uh, is going to inherit from the I department. And we're going to override the constructor here. So we're going to say init is just going to be self and employees. And we're going to say self dot employees equals employees like that. Um, we are missing a P here. So employees. And we're missing it here as well. So let's add that as well. Employees. Uh, there you go. And then we're going to have the print method. So we're going to say def print department. <clears throat> and I think we need to pass a self object here. Or do we? Yeah, we need to pass a self object here. And then we're going to say print accounting department and we can print the amount of employees in this particular department. So we're not going to divide this one into sub apartments. This is just going to be, uh, you could you could say a leaf department since it's at the leaves of a tree. So we don't have any childs here anymore. Uh, and we're going to have another one of those. So we're going to just copy all of this here. And we're going to paste it here and we're going to rename it to development, for example. And then here we're just going to t uh, change the test to development text to development department. And this is the basic those are the basic two leave departments, you could say and then we have one parent department. So now we're going to say class parent department, which is also an I department. And here we're going to do it a little bit differently. So here we're going to have 
uh, the basic constructor again, but we're going to add some functionality here. So we're going to say def init and again self employees because the parent department on its own without looking at the child departments is also going to have uh, some employees and we're going to say the employees are going to be starting at that number because those are the base employees. But then in order to not lose track of that number, we're also going to say we have the base employees and we're not going to change that number so that we know how many of those employees are actually part of the parent department without being part of the child departments. And then we're going to have the print method or actually we need to add one more thing because we need to be able to add departments to the parent department. So we're going to say self dot sub depths is an empty list. And then we're going to add an add method here. So we're going to add a department to this list. So we're going to take self and a specific department into this list here. And uh, we're going to just say self dot sub departments dot append department. And we're going to increase the number of employees, not the base employees, but the employees at all uh, in general, we're going to increase that by the amount of employees in this uh, in this department, like that. And then we're going to have the print method here, which is going to be the print department method self. And now we're going to print not only the information about the parent department in and of itself, but also about the child department. So we're going to say, print parent department, for example, or actually maybe use a space here, parent department, and then print um, parent department, base employees is going to be just self dot base employees, like that. And then we're going to say for every department in sub departments, we're going to say department print department, so that we get this information as well. And then we're going to print total number of employees is going to be self dot employees because this number is constantly being updated. And here we're going to add an F for the F string. And then we can actually, <coughs> sorry, uh, then we're actually done. What do we have here? Sub depths. Oh, self dot sub depth, sorry. Um, then we're actually done because now we can go ahead and use this. by just saying department one is going to be the accounting department with 200 employees, for example. And department two is going to be the developer or the development department with 170 employees here. And then we're going to have the parent department, which is going to be just a parent department with a base employee amount of 30, for example, just some administrative tasks there. And then we can add to this parent department, let me just center this here. Um, we can add to this parent department, department one, and the department two. And then we can go ahead and print everything. So parent department, print department, there you go, that's it. Take a look at the code again. Let me just make sure that I'm not blocking everything. No, I'm small enough. So this is the code again. We just have um, the interface and two basic uh, leaf departments, you could say, and then a parent department, which adds those departments together. So a very simple design pattern. Let's take a look at it. Terminal, tab, bash, and we're going to navigate to this directory and we're going to say Python 3 main py. And you can see we have the parent department base employees 30, then 200 in accounting 117 development, and a total number of employees is 400. So that's the basic idea of the composite design pattern. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.